Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of Able Maths. Here we're looking at an introduction to radians, so we can answer questions from exercise 5a. So what is a radian then? Well a radian is another way that we can measure the angle of turn other than using degrees, 0 to 360. Um, so you may be thinking, well, but I'm happy with degrees from 0 to 360, that's all I've done. Um, in fact, what we'll see is that radians, when, when your angle is measured in radians, some calculations are actually a lot easier. And when you come on to the more complicated stuff towards the end of A-level maths, the differentiation and the integration, it only works when you're substituting in angles that are measured in radians. Okay, so... They will become more useful later on, um, so we're going to have to get used to the basics of them at this point in time. So, um, how are they easily as how are they easiest described? Um, if arc length AB, so let's make an arc length A to B, um, has length R, then the angle AOB is equal to one radian. So that's to say that the radius is equal to the arc length when the angle inside that um, sector is equal to 1. Okay, so the, the arc length is equal to the radius when the angle inside here is 1. So radians don't get very big. Um, they only A 360 degree turn only goes up to about 6 point something, 6.3 I think. Okay, so they don't go up to very big, they don't go all the way up to the number 360, they stay around about 6.5. <coughs> so in this case here, an arc length R um, corresponds to when the angle inside the circle is 1 radian. And instead of using a circle to measure radian, we put a little C or a rad um, abbreviation. <coughs> So multiplying this by 2 pi will give us the um, perimeter of the circle. Or the, or the um, perimeter of the circle is the circumference. Sorry, I forgot it there. So if we times by 2 pi there, um, as 2 pi r is a complete circle, that means that 2 pi radians is equal to 360. And what I generally use as my benchmarker is that pi radians is equal to a straight line. Okay, so now pi is suddenly becoming involved with angles um, where pi radians is equal to a straight line, 180. So two pi radians is that of a full circle. And one radian is the measure of the angle when the arc length is equal to the radius. So there are some different um, ways you can calculate it, but 180 divided by pi is equal to 1 radian. This will be in degrees mode, this will be in radians mode. Okay, so keep this in mind at the top then, that pi radians is a straight line, um, 2 pi radians is a full circle, and that's the conversion between one method of measuring and another method of measuring an angle. So let's have a little bit of a practice at going from radians to degrees. So how would we calculate um, this angle here in degrees? Well, what I would do is I'd just grab my calculator and I know that this is going to be 7 eighths of a straight line, pi. So it's just 7 eighths of 180. You could do it by this complicated method here if you want to, but it is just going to be 7 eighths of 180. If you do 7 out of 8, of 180 and just replace any pi you ever see with 180, you're going to be fine. 7 divided by 8 times 180, good stuff, yeah, 157.5. What about this one here then? 4 fifteenths pi radians. Change pi into 180 and it's now just going to be 4 fifteenths of a straight line. Pi is a straight line um, in radians mode. So 4 fifteenths divide, sorry, 4 fifteenths times 180, and effectively here you're seeing that the 180 appears here and the pi radians will get cancelled out. So it's 720 divided by 15, which is 48. So this angle here that's measured in radians is equivalent to this angle here that's measured in degrees. 
So sometimes it is the case that um, that a radians degree has a pi in it. It doesn't always have a pi in it, but sometimes it will have a pi in it for the nicer whole number angles. Let's go back then. Let's turn a degree <coughs> into 150. Well, first of all, we need to know what fraction of 180 150 is, and then we can times by pi. So divide it by 180 times by pi. <clears throat> and in this case here, we're going to get 5 pi by 6. So divide by 180 times by pi. Next one, 110 divided by 180 times by pi. And in this case here, we're going to get 11 over 18 pi. Okay, so these are the key relationships you need to remember. For pi radians, we get a straight line. For pi by 2 radians, we get a 90 degree angle or a right angle. Pi by 3 is 60 degrees, pi by 4 is 45 degrees, pi by 6 is 30 degrees. Now given that you had to remember all of your 60, 45, 30, 90 and 0 angles for GCSE, it may be expected of you that you need to remember <coughs> these angles for sine, cos and tan um, in radians mode. And what we can also do is we can sometimes solve trig equations using radians. And for that, we'd need a trig, uh, a radians graph. So if you watch what's going to happen to the top line here, they'll all start turning into radians mode. So if you were given a question to solve a trig equation using radians, this is going to be the diagram that's going to be most useful to you. 180 degrees will still be the same as pi, 90 degrees right angle, uh, full 360s is 2 pi, 270 would be 3 pi by 2, and that's how your sine graph is going to look. Cos will pretty much do exactly the same, turn all of those into their radians equivalent, and the same for pi as well, turn all of them into their radians equivalent as well. Notice here how now the asymptote is going to be at pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, minus pi by 2, minus 3 pi by 2. All the by 2s are now going to have um, an asymptote on them when simplified to their, um, when, when simplified as a fraction. Okay, so we're going to be using radians a lot in A-level maths. The rest of this chapter is using radians, and a lot of the chapters to come will also be using radians. So... Let's make sure we are well versed on this. Sketch the graph of cos x plus pi. Now it's plus inside the brackets, that means it moves left by pi units. So that means that where it was pi before is now going to be at zero. Um, <clears throat> so moving it, moving this bottom case down to here, if we are first moved, 2 pi will move over to pi. So that's why this ends up here. But obviously you know that this graph will carry on. So this part here at 3 pi will come down to 2 pi. And so there we are. OK, your turn to do a little bit of conversion now. Pause the video and try this out. OK, so for part A, we need to first know what fraction 8 is of 180, and then we can times it by pi. So 8 divided by 180 gives us a simplified fraction of 2 pi over 45. Um, this would also be equal to 0 0.0 um, uh, times by pi. This would also be equivalent to 0 0.1396 when written in decimal form. Okay, sometimes you will have them written in decimal form. 22.5, well hang on, I'm, I almost know 22.5. I know that pi by 4 is 45 degrees, so I need to then half that. So pi by 8 is my answer for part B. And part C, well, I know that that's just 90 plus 180. 90 is pi by 2, 180 is pi. So add these two together and we get 3 pi by 2. So a few different ways of getting to your answer there. Uh, part 2 here, well, if I know that pi is 180, I just need to do 180 divided by 6, and that's 30. 
This one here, two thirds of 180 is 120, and eight fifths of 180, I think I'll do that one on my calculator, eight fifths of 180 is 288 degrees. So there we are, those are the answers to these questions here then. Have a go at plenty of more of these on exercise 5a. Before we move on and start doing some trigonometry, it's best to get used to this conversion. Okay, thanks very much for watching.